Welcome to our workshop. This is LinkedIn Unleashed, and thank you for joining us. I'm Joe Musuraka. I'm a SCORE mentor, a volunteer mentor, and I'll be the host tonight. So we'll do our best to live up to your expectations. SCORE is a resource partner of the SBA, and we're funded by a grant from Congress. There are roughly 10,000 mentors nationwide, and there are 40 here in the upstate. So tonight's workshop is typical of what SCORE does. We work with either startup or existing small businesses offering two primary services. First, training through the workshops like tonight and our extensive library that's on our Piedmont SCORE website. And second is mentoring. So our volunteer mentors can walk with you as you develop and grow your business, providing either a sounding board or coaching as required. A little bit of housekeeping. Everyone is set to mute, so you don't have to worry about your dog barking or a baby crying in the background. If you have a question during the presentation, um, you can click on chat at the bottom and let me know it and we'll address it right away. Otherwise, um, we're gonna have a question and answer session toward the end where you could ask and chat as long as you'd like in person. Also at the end of the program, we'll be asking you to complete a short survey. And the reason we do this is so that uh, we can get your feedback and continuously improve our workshops. So now I'm pleased to introduce our presenter tonight. Nicole Riley is one of our volunteer subject matter experts and our director of social media. She's been in marketing and digital marketing for many years. And tonight she'll be sharing some of that experience with us. Take it away. <laughs> okay, thank you. All right, so welcome to LinkedIn Unlocked. Um, yeah, this webinar is intended for anybody who is looking to maximize the efforts of marketing a small business on LinkedIn, although uh, any business professional, even those who are working or consulting in social media for companies of any size, really, uh, could find some benefit in what we're going to present today. And uh, this is a very unique platform among social media, LinkedIn, um, combining uh, social interactivity and career networking in a, in a business-oriented platform. So um, why should you be listening to me about it? Who am I, uh, as Joe told you? I participate with the SCORE Piedmont local chapter as a subject matter expert in digital marketing. Uh, back in the land before time, I studied graphic design at Greenville Technical College. I also majored in advertising at USC and Columbia, and currently I'm studying a master's program for business and technology at UGA. Uh, over the years, I've managed brand and marketing campaigns for large renowned names and I've created content and identity marketing for regional media uh, and market research medium-sized firms. And for two decades, I've supported and consulted hundreds of small business owners in the local Greenville, South Carolina area. You might recognize some of those there if you are familiar with this area. Uh, but after the modern internet era uh, all over the nation as well. So what I've learned in my marketing experience is that it, it uh, doesn't matter whether you're a global corporation or whether you're a middle, medium sized company or if you're a small company. Uh, every single one of them all has the same needs in the end, everyone, which is to rely on marketing in order to make money. So what are, uh, what are we going to learn today? Um, I changed a little bit of what I thought I might be talking about with regard to how to market a business on LinkedIn because initially I, I was sort of honing in on LinkedIn and I uh, realized that social media marketing and digital marketing uh, is constantly changing and to focus too much on the specifics of what a new user or someone new uh, to business, uh, creating a new business, what they might be seeing uh, today as navigating through the platform itself might not uh, last very long. And so in an attempt to um, give something of a little more value, I think I uh, thought that putting something together that focused on a longer term um, view of what, what we're doing when we market in the first place, whether it's online 
uh, or anywhere, but you know, why are you doing it? And very importantly, what are you saying when you're doing it? So briefly, what are we gonna learn today? Um, I would like to walk you guys through just some of the considerations that a new business owner might need to have when marketing your company anywhere. And so the basics could start off with um, establishing your image, your brand and creating your identity. Um, certainly on LinkedIn and in other places as well, you'll be building uh, a network or relationships with people and you'll look to communicate with them confidently by publishing marketing communications to them on LinkedIn. That will be obvious, but in anywhere, you'll be communicating with your marketplace and you wanna promote your brand, you wanna promote your product. So advertising uh, is a specific point and you'll always be looking to reach more people or reach the right people and um, market them, actually deliver the benefit of why your goods or service should be purchased. Um, and in the end of this webinar, I'll go over a couple of pro tips that are specific to the LinkedIn uh, platform, including account security and some advanced tools for people who are maybe a little more internet savvy. Um, but market marketing is the thing we want to focus on right now. So uh, let's take a look deeper into what marketing is. Um, Marketing and innovation uh, business has two and only two functions. Uh, marketing and innovation, those are the things that produce results and anything else is costs or so says Peter Drucker. And uh, as long as we focus on marketing and innovation here, we should ask what is marketing? So in a generic, kind of uh, consensus is called the three P's, product, which could be services also, um, what you're gonna price that product that you're selling at and how you're gonna get the market to know about it and in what place you're gonna sell it. I know these seem like very broad strokes and they should be just to get our heads in the, the right place when we talk about how we're gonna market, uh, market on LinkedIn. So there's tons of things involved in marketing and research obviously would contribute to um, how competitive you can be. It might uh, teach you more about the type of product that you're looking into or are already selling. And then strategy, marketing strategy. How are you gonna get it out there? Um, one of my favorites is branding. Uh, how are you gonna make yourself known uh, your brand specifically amongst all the chatter and din out there, which online, there is tons of it. Um, and then advertising being kind of the actual channel of the message that you're delivering. All of these things are important to be considering when you're marketing anywhere at any time, uh, whether it's online or elsewhere, but online uh, specifically because there's so much traffic and so many messages. So other parts of marketing include uh, this kind of channel specific things like direct marketing, email marketing would be part of direct marketing. Public relations could come through any number of media, but it's yet another channel to reach people. And uh, digital marketing as opposed to like direct marketing being a letter in the mail or um, a phone call or even an in-person visit. Uh, digital marketing is anything also. It doesn't have to be just social media, um, but the, the big kahuna, the thing we're all after here, uh, which is very tied into marketing is obviously the sales. So this webinar is gonna focus on digital marketing and sales. Um, a great man considered today to be the father of modern advertising, which you could almost, uh, create as a synonym the word marketing since uh, that's advertising being what we used to consider radio and TV and billboards, it still exists, but uh, today we're gonna to talk about it in the digital platform. So he thought uh, if you wanna be successful today, you can't just be creative. This is a guy who ran an advertising agency. He said, you, you need to sell what you're creating. So I bring all this up just to really gear people's minds up to think about what we're trying to do when we're marketing. 
uh, Ogilvy said, if, if it doesn't sell, then it's clearly you weren't being creative. You'll never bore anyone into buying your product. And what he suggested you do instead is study your competitors and then whatever they're doing, you do, you do the opposite of it. Um, but always tell the truth, just make that truth fascinating. That's the fascinating part is so much of what marketing is. Uh, and true to uh, his longevity uh, for wise words, Ogilvy even brought up the term content, which a lot of people in social media marketing are very familiar with. Uh, he claimed that content was the most important part of what you're doing out there when you're marketing. And today, content marketing is itself a very hot word. Um, being specific to digital marketing, however, it was used in print before. It's basically uh, free uh, content you deliver to your customers so that they are instilled with a sense of benefit from what you're doing as a company or a service provider, goods goods retailer. Um, it's a share of mine. It's a way to grab their attention and hold it. And so much of what we do on digital marketing is in that vein. Um, and uh, content marketing could be defined specifically as a strategic marketing approach. But the big important part is the distribution. Uh, this, uh, this digital marketing and the social media marketing platform is what we're focusing on in this uh, definition as the place where we're distributing that extra value and extra benefit we give to our, our customers. And ultimately, um, like a, uh, David Ogilvy said, it's for sales. We were looking to attract and retain a defined audience and LinkedIn above all social media platforms is able to deliver that targeted audience and uh, really help drive um, profit for your goals. So now this fancy graphic, basically reiterating that LinkedIn is the number one. Uh, we can go straight into looking at some stats across the social media platforms where you're definitely here today to focus on LinkedIn, but it's interesting to consider, and I know some of this font is a little small. I hope y'all display are able to read it. Um, you know, lead generation, you can see right away at the top for usage as reasons why the users are using the platform. Uh, that screams that it's a business place. But um, what, what is very interesting uh, to me and uh, digital marketers is that for a relatively small amount of users in the world, um, it's getting a lot of attention. If you guys Google, um, a coworker's name or someone that maybe you know has a LinkedIn profile. You know, it used to be maybe in 2015 that their Facebook profile um, URL address would show up in the Google results first, indicating that that website had a lot of clout and Facebook undoubtedly does. But today what's happening is that LinkedIn is showing up first and it's likely that despite the uh, platform uh, popularity and number of users that Facebook has that uh, Google has decided to ascribe some some different weight to the LinkedIn platform because of the amount of activity types of activity and then of course they display things to you based off what you search for but no matter what their mysterious algorithms are what uh, is clear is that LinkedIn is coming up very strongly as a place to make waves when you're trying to get yourself noticed online. And obviously, a business um, should take note of what that does because you have a lot of tools available to you on LinkedIn. Uh, the lead generation aspect I'm gonna to touch on in a little bit, but um, that being the number one. So when it comes to Marketing a small business on LinkedIn, you will have a great deal of resources available directly from LinkedIn. And this plays into part of what I was saying about not wanting to get too deep into showing uh, screenshots of where functions are located or what the uh, look and feel of the site is. Some of these things will change as uh, the platform decides to add features, but uh, currently today, this is a working URL address that 
LinkedIn is offering for people marketing a small business. And they offer uh, very much exactly what I would have already been saying um, on what they're calling a five page action plan. I'm not gonna delve into that, but I would have and am gonna suggest to anyone looking to grow a business with participation on LinkedIn to really focus on that very first one. I'll get a little more detailed about the how to's of this in just a minute, but um, I can say one of the most important things across all platforms, but LinkedIn especially, that's what we're focused on, is completing everything you can, every field that you have open to you to generate your own data as content, which doesn't necessarily have to be a post per se, it can be anything that's describing you uniquely across the platform, you want to fill all that in you can. And it might seem overzealous, but I literally mean if they allow you to upload a video, upload one. If they let you put a picture, upload a picture. Be careful with visuals that you're making sure that they're appropriate, but the more important thing, if you want eyes on you as opposed to other people's being able to be found and the way that these uh, platforms work is they only offer up to those searching for people uh, what i mean by people's businesses let's say or things ideas like oh, i'm in the market for a, a new landscape or let me get on linkedin and see if i can find one their linkedin will only return to a search on landscapers those that it considers to be valuable for the person searching which is the ones that have the most components filled out on their uh, profile pages, the ID parts that are immediate. Um, so moving on, growing your page, yes, absolutely. I can talk to you guys about how to do all that. Um, but the second biggest one, I think, is the posting the right content part. And uh, something I wanna differentiate with you guys today regarding that issue about the right content is making sure we understand what types of content you can put on LinkedIn. And I notice a lot of people I talk to, businesses and professional colleagues, are a little confused about the nature of the difference between the personal page on LinkedIn versus the company page. Um, to be clear, you cannot create a company page unless you are able to validate a company website. You could go through all the steps of attempting to set one up, but without LinkedIn seeing that your company has a live property somewhere online that it can verify, um, you won't be able to go much further than those beginning steps. But should you be successful, and because you have a website for a company set up, you'll notice that the difference in how the URL is written out to identify whether you're on a, a uh, address within the LinkedIn platform that's an individual is the IN that's indicating it's a personal page versus company. Now another part that's confusing people is some companies are creating what the platform means to be an individual's page but they're not trying to be um, uh, tricky about what they're publishing. They just uh, maybe didn't realize, or at the time that they created it, LinkedIn might not have had um, that component of their platform set up. So you'll still see I am in the URL of company pages. We're not concerned with how somebody else set up. Uh, for this webinar, I wanna talk to you guys about the appropriate way for you to set it up. So, when we're discussing the content that you put out to market yourself to make money with the business you already have or the one you're opening, like let's just assume it's a brand new one, you're starting the business, you'll absolutely have to start with the personal page. And it's from there that a lot of your important functions come that help you to develop the company page. Um, Sorry, but one of the... Excuse me, oh, Nicole. Sure, we got some questions. We have a question from Dr. Deering, and he's asking, for someone in the personal brand space as a business, would you suggest setting up a business page and a personal page? 
Um, that is a question I can answer and uh, speak to it from a perspective on digital marketing across the board, not necessarily best practices on LinkedIn, but my, my overall answer really either way would be yes. But the reason I'm answering that way is for the digital marketing end of it. A lot of the work I do, especially with people building a brand, it is never limited to a single social media platform such as LinkedIn, which we're talking about, but it's about what the effect of content created on any number of platforms, not even just limited to social media, but especially including your own website. What, what different uh, tactics and schedules and types of content created across all of those we'll call them platforms or websites, whichever you like, because it depends whether it's your own or uh, someone else's maybe, but um, that can build um, your uh, authority, your page rank as Google calls it. And with 90, I think it's 93 or 97% of the entire globe is finding people by way of Google searches. Excuse me for <laughs> lauding the giant, but it's undeniable. It's very important for anyone establishing a brand or growing a business to pay attention to what their success in Google is. And Google and LinkedIn and all their social media platforms are all sort of contributing together to that end success. So the sooner and better you are playing the game the way they have set the game up to be played, meaning create a personal page versus a company page. The sooner that the platforms and the search engine are recognizing what you're doing as the way they like to, remember it's, it's basically computer, which is reading all of these pieces of content we're delivering. When the computer says, ah, ha, ha, I recognize this. This is how I like it. And this is how I know to display it correctly to the person on the other end who's the one searching for you. Then the better uh, we do at getting all that data to that uh, algorithm to be interpreted the right way for the end user, the sooner you'll see success. And when I say sooner, I mean, these things can happen almost within weeks when you make small changes to what you thought previously was just sort of like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll fix that later. Uh, you had uh, have no idea. I mean, I've watched it happen over and over with clients that what they thought was just um, something that could be sort of tucked away for housekeeping on a rainy day meant a difference between increasing their traffic from 20,000 people a month to 80,000 within two weeks. Something as simple as this. So yes, yes is the answer to your wonderful question. Um, so you. go ahead. Yes, no problem. So um, to continue with uh, discussing the difference uh, in how we set up things specific to LinkedIn, the personal page, uh, we should really be thinking about uh, even from a business sense or from a business professional, whether you're, you're promoting a product or you're just promoting yourself, the personal page starts with all of us as individuals creating a network. The company page is where you look at content in the sense of, uh, and, and let me back up real quick. That is also one of LinkedIn's amazing features. Not just the community is a, a business um, mindset, uh, but the company page offers a function with regard to content without launching an actual account live on the screen, which I don't really want to do it. Switching between software on Zoom makes everything hiccupy. So I'll just explain it. But um, once you have established a company page on LinkedIn, you're given some access to some special features. And one of those is a content curation feature. For people who are not maybe as savvy as others in the group tonight, uh, content curation is simply a term that means you didn't write the content. And by the way, backing up further, content is just information, images, or text, an article or a picture, all of that, all the things that we see when we cruise the internet is content. So when a company is posting things, everything that's in that post is content, whether it's a video they link to, 
or a, a photo, maybe a, an employee at the office or an event they held, and a small summary. All of that is content. Uh, LinkedIn's content curation feature will allow you when you're setting up your company page to tell LinkedIn, I think it's possible. My company could be categorized in um, maybe some umbrella categories. Like if one doesn't seem to suit uh, or, or explicitly define who you are or what you're doing, you are allowed to pick several others. For instance, I work with a stone fabrication company, but they don't, they're not like uh, dealing with just quarries and people cracking the rock straight out of the earth. They're dealing with like interior designers and the home uh, user and they do commercial work, but they weren't really trying to reach hotels. So we opted against picking anything out of the um, hotel and entertainment industry. And we did select, I think, construction and um, uh, possibly real estate was one of the categories we picked and then interior design. So and you can always change these things also, but that's to give you guys um, an idea of what I mean when I say um, once that you've picked your uh, identifiers for the industry you're in, uh, according to your company page on LinkedIn, that's when you'll start to see um, the differences made in the content curation feature they offer you. So LinkedIn, once you, it's a tab, it's a tab located from within the company page where you would post things to it. You have a chance to say, hey, LinkedIn, why don't you let me know what's being talked about in the world today that's relevant to my industry? Um, and based on those qualifiers, it will generate uh, content specific to them or also content that's just a, a hot item because we don't always have to tell our audience or anyone that's viewing our pages um, you know only about the business we're in uh, content can be valuable to people for any number of reasons and especially I'm sure you all know with this pandemic uh, a lot of people have wanted to read uh, an article or hear a more recent story about what might be being said. So back to the point, which is LinkedIn's company page features help business owners to save a little bit of time by curating some of that uh, relevant and valuable content for you. Now, are they doing it just for you? No, of course not. They're doing it for everyone that has a company page and they're basing it off the metrics that their own platform generates. So the big hot article that LinkedIn is telling you people are reading is the same trending hot article that everyone else may or may not be linking. So you have to recall that when you decide what you wanna post, but as far as features, that cater to the business community who is running a business on top of trying to manage their digital marketing. That is a, a time saver and value. So sorry, answering those questions, I kind of uh, passed up passing some slides, but, uh, but to, to review again, the personal page is really about building your network and it is from that network that you will invite people to your company page. They can't get there any other way. And um, to come back to my point earlier about LinkedIn's uh, specific value to business owners with regard to lead generation, um, the, there are paid advertising campaigns and tools uh, within the LinkedIn platform that were, were never my aim to explore in this topic today. Although if you guys are interested in um, delving deeper and stuff like that. We could, I could do another workshop on that, but for a lot of the small business owners, we deal with budget constraints or concern. And honestly, from my own work in digital marketing, um, I have small qualms with paid advertising on social media, which are basically there, they have their roots in content marketing as a um, channel of marketing your message to your consumers is a timeless platform uh, to deliver. Like as long as you own your website, as long as it's proprietary, um, 
And even to some degree, as long as you're managing your social media accounts, those posts that you put on social media will be there as long as the platform is still um, live on the internet and as long as your account is in good standing and not shut down, your website will always be showcasing your content as long as you're you know, paying your service provider and keep creating it. But paid social advertising does have a shelf life. Now, for people who are selling um, uh, consumer product, I'm sorry, goods like um, attire for things that are um, sort of better geared for a social media platform than others, like um, culturally uh, reverberating products, things that are, uh, you know, the community hypes it up and riding the wave of that hype is important and short-lived, then paid advertising on social media and other places is an ideal place. But when I think, when I was thinking about developing the content for this webinar and what a business owner might be thinking of as far as how to market themselves on LinkedIn, I thought that the better and broader thing would be to discuss the free tools, which there are plenty, and they, if you have the time, there are enough of them to get some great strides made. So going back to the slide here under the generate leads component, like the, the, the LinkedIn platform's capacity to put you in touch with people who've already identified themselves by way of their job title as what... Um, their role within the company is, or, you know, let, let's just say it was the, the word uh, purchase or, or um, supplier or even more industry specific um, uh, marketing, whatever, whatever it is you might be after, those hot keywords in those job titles are being furnished by the users and then become searchable by uh, others, us, let's say, looking for someone of that title. Once found and once that network has been established, uh, an invitation, um, you're then able to have, um, you know, endless conversations with this person as long as they maintain that uh, friendship or connection status with you. So, the generating leads component is where I see a lot of business development happening for people. And it's a tentative place because you don't want to sales call someone to death on a chat message, but done very um, sophisticatedly and not aggressively. That direct message component combined with LinkedIn's platform that is delivering to you identities of people who've already self-identified, possibly as being in the geography you're looking for, or in the industry you're looking for, or with the responsibility or leadership role that you're after, means volumes to anyone who's looking to build their um, marketplace in order to deliver messages to their target audience. Once you get them over to your company page, you have a very clear um, agenda in mind, which is get them off the stinking social media platform and onto your website where possibly you actually have uh, protocols and um, services or uh, programming or third party services, whatever the case may be, in place to produce a sale. Um, and this would be very dependent on what scope of uh, business model you're after today when you're considering um, marketing on LinkedIn. But uh, landing pages is, um, it's not just a great way to assure the person that got to your site, yep, it's still me, yep, that thing we were talking about, that's still what we're doing. But it's a great way to track people like, oh yeah, if they click here, um, and then I can look at my analytics on my own website once they got here. And I know that that user, that IP address with those identifying factors, they came to me through the LinkedIn platform. And that's how you get to be very specific with what marketing messages you're using, the verbiage you state in them. This would be uh, definitely great stuff to dive way deeper into on a, on a, a digital marketing workshop. But um, let's just focus on the point that getting traffic to 
where your sales can happen, whether that traffic needs to happen in person um, or an actual transaction via credit card payment, et cetera, is happening on your website. The point is to get them off LinkedIn and over there. And so that's another um, echo of the whole issue with content to begin with, which even David Ogilvie was talking about, content being so important. Um, we don't really want to waste a lot of time um, posting content to other people's websites. Now, we definitely want to share content with our user base that gets their attention and that is relevant to them. But our number one concern is that we drive it back home, back to our company, back to where we um, can track it, can control it, can help them drive more benefit and can ultimately monetize it. Um, so when we consider um, things about posting on social media, all oh, this was a um, chart I had made up specific for SCORE. And so what you're looking at here, and I do apologize for the small font, but you will notice that the along the left side, uh, vertical axis times, hopefully you're able to see the 8, 9, 10, and 12 p.m., 1 p.m., 2 p.m. is being very large. And that's indicating that's, that's when the traffic is highest online. Um, and if you follow those over across the panel to those big dark blue blocks, that is the LinkedIn section. Now this particular chart was for the SCORE nonprofit group and I was showing them what, um, sorry, by the way, this data came from Sprout Social, which is a, uh, they provide services um, based on social media posting. I don't really want to delve too much into all the various things Sprout does, but one of the things they did for me with regard to this webinar is they shared some information to me about what industry um, receives the best uh, chance of getting seen for content based on their their industry at what times. And it's not, there's not that big of a variance. I mean, there's a little bit, but... Um, so I went ahead and posted this. This is a chart specific for people posting nonprofit content. But again, the variance is not that great. And mostly what I would point out about LinkedIn is it's a workers, a working professionals uh, platform. And as such, you can really expect to get your biggest hits in the early morning before people are either maybe they just got to work or just starting their day. Um, or um, afternoon after lunch, maybe they first get back and um, possibly chatting to other people who aren't even in the same uh, geography as them um, online about uh, business concerns or, or maybe uh, they're answering to marketers who are reaching out about things that their company um, has a reason to be involved in. There's all sorts of reasons why people will be cruising as social media for valid reasons while on the company time. Um, so uh, recapping some of the stuff, which I know has been brought and I do wanna leave some time for people to ask maybe more specific concerns about their particular business model or what they don't know or wanna know about how to market on LinkedIn. Let me just run quickly back over what we covered which was to never forget that hand in hand with marketing, the goal is sales. Um, a lot of creative people, a lot of great creative people, and me as a graphic designer, I, I could be one, um, can get caught spinning their wheels, focusing on being creative, rather than remembering that the creativity, like David Ogilvie said, is, is almost useless in a business sense if you're not generating sales. And the four P's of marketing being what we want to always have in our focus as we generate marketing content that we deliver on LinkedIn or any other platform, uh, product, uh, the pricing we have it at, uh, the promotions, uh, how, how we make it attractive to our audience and the place, where is it exactly they can buy it. Always be thinking about expressing those four P's to your audience. Um, creative content driving interest. Yes, it doesn't always have to be um, about your industry or about your newest product. It can be about what's um, appealing to your audience base, but if it isn't creative enough, it's not going to get heard over the din 
that is out there. Um, and then uh, social media is a use for distributing content. Let's, let's just focus on keeping it like that. Don't get lost in believing social media can be your platform, your website. They are just a channel, no different than buying a newspaper ad would have been back in the day. Facebook, uh, Twitter, they all have their different benefits for use, but they are just tools to get you to the end user. They are not representative of your voice. You should always have clear control over your own messaging and communications. The social media therefore should always be directing people back to you. And the reason they'll follow back to you is because you're curating the appropriate kind of content. You're posting it consistently. Um, I, uh, to touch on that real quick, I didn't give much detail. That can range. What is, I mean, consistently doesn't range. That means it's on a pattern, but what, what, um, what, what sequence would it be? Once a week, would it be twice a month? It really depends on the nature of the product you're selling, but um, twice a month is probably a minimum, especially when you're considering broader digital marketing um, tactics. Uh, Google is going to consider your account with any given social media platform as being active and therefore worth um, attributing strength to you and your website because you update it at least twice a month. So yeah, they're at the end just driving it home with make sure you're driving traffic off the platform and to your website and um, use direct messaging. Oh, I almost forgot you guys, the pro tips. Account security and advanced tools, whatever you do. Please, everyone, right now, if you haven't already, go back to your LinkedIn profile, whether it's personal or whether you have a specific one for your work email address, and right now put in a secondary email address to support as a security measure on your account. LinkedIn can at any, at any time decide to shut down an account. And if anything were to get hacked or let's just even say this happened to a client of mine he had a, an auto pay on his uh, web service where this is for his website um, hosting service. So it's not a service that we're intensively involved in and nobody's on customer service with them unless the website doesn't work, which it always was. But he wound up changing and getting a new credit card. And for whatever reason, the mail forwarding wasn't getting these emails that came through to an email no one was using uh, because no one ever was communicating with the hosting company. At the end of this tale, he lost the account, the hosting account. And when that happened, when, when they said, we've been trying to tell you, you've not been paying your bill, um, they shut it down. Who wouldn't? Well, they're not going to keep hosting all of the content you have on a website without getting their due money for it. But before uh, he could even realize what had happened, uh, GoDaddy had wound up putting up for sale his website name, and when that happened, someone bought it, and he will never be able to get it back unless that owner now decides he will sell it back, but the, the tertiary, uh, most stinky layer of that onion was that he never had another email address on any single social media platform or any platform created except the one that was tied into his company website and the email server that no longer are owned by him. So he is losing all of his traffic and access. Please go put a secondary backup email address on your accounts. Uh, can't say it enough times. Advanced tools, real quick, for those who are digitally savvy and you already know about using Google search. Um, I put this one up here because I'm not sure if it's still the case, but it probably is, that LinkedIn is allowing sort of like a specific, i um, sorry, they're giving some more detailed data about users to those who are paying, um, this would be through like the sales navigator uh, will give you a whole bevy of tools on the LinkedIn platform to help you get stronger lead generation. But one of the tactics I've used comes from Google, a very strong search engine. And just to uh, clarify what I mean in those white brackets when I'm saying 
to try to perform your own lead generation in Google searches upon the website LinkedIn is um, down in the yellow type beneath. Um, if you were to type in, let's say, um, in quotes, I'll take the stone shop I was working with. If I were to type in, I remember I said we worked with interior designers. So business type in, in quotes, interior design, and then and, and let's say that company was in Atlanta. I put Atlanta in, and then I say, and I'm looking for an owner of a company. Well, and then I put the site. Uh, I'm telling Google, only search for those keywords on the site, linkedin.com. I can do backslash IN if I want to reach an individual. I can do backslash dot company if I want to reach a company. But this uh, allows Google to say, we're going to look up that data for you. If LinkedIn told us we can display it, then we're going to give it to you. We're not trying to monetize that end of it. I've had extraordinary successes generating results from using Google to do some uh, lead gen research outside of the LinkedIn platform. And um, that is my final pro tip for you guys. And that's where I'll end the slideshow. So I will unmute everybody here and uh, then you can uh, ask questions as you would like. I see some chat down here. Do we have questions or we already addressed those? Yeah. Yeah, good. Well, um, if anyone has a, I mean, I know maybe it's kind of leery to discuss maybe your personal baby of something you want to innovate, but I'd be glad to talk to you about y'all specifics if you are up for sharing it. Hello, can you yes. hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Sorry. hi, I'm, doc I'm Dr. Deering. Um, thank you so much for this presentation. Uh, it's been really uh, helpful and I appreciate your graphics too. Um, I had a, a several questions. One had to do with, you mentioned something about the free tools existing. Um, I didn't know what you were referring to in terms of tools, tools for searching, tools for legit, like what? what were you you, everything you just listed, basically everything I talked about in this webinar today is free. I, what I meant to differentiate is that LinkedIn does have other tools that you do pay for, and I, I wasn't going to cover those tonight. Okay, so and so that would include the cur curation uh, feature? That's that exactly mentioned? right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I would just, I guess, Google, <laughs> pardon the but, but, or Not at all. Yeah, in fact, if you don't already have your own uh, company page established on LinkedIn, or maybe you do. No, um, I don't. I don't. Very well. Uh, honestly, I could show you some screen grabs. If you want to share with us, maybe um, share over uh, the chat box um, some contact data for you. I'd be glad to email you what the interface appears like when you do establish that page and that way you'll have a, a very recent queue as you set your own up of where you navigate to it. I just when I put tonight's webinar together I thought well you know people might come back and see this in months from now what if they've moved that so I steered away from that but I'd be I'd be happy to show you all that. If oh, like. I, I'd appreciate that thank you. Um, my second question had to do with um, the, I guess my specific situation is where I, and I kind of hinted at it with my earlier question, where I'm trying to do, I'm doing, I'm pivoting and trying to do more personal brand stuff in terms of mother daughter relationship expert stuff. And, but I have a company name, Curative Fashions. And I have a podcast. And so what I'm trying to do is figure out how can I get back into re-engaging, posting on LinkedIn and getting engagement. Because what I found is if I'm, I've posted like videos that I put up on, on YouTube or um, I'll post like little snippets where I'm giving moms or executive moms specific ways to to interact with their daughters or i'm just posting the the page of my uh like the itunes icon for my podcast and i'm finding that the stuff that gets the most views are when i've and we haven't done it recently uh been at an event 
and I take a photo op. Mm -hmm. People will just keep clicking that kind of stuff. But what I'm looking to try to do is get engagement. So I'm not quite sure what kinds of things I need to be posting to get more engagement, like conversation going. Yeah. You know what? I know, um, I know to be true what you're saying, where it's like people's people respond to something that feels more intimate to them. And somehow like an image of a live event is really hot versus like, Hey, come and uh, join in this discussion. It's like kind of like a visually nebulous idea. What is this discussion I'm joining? Where is that image? But um, I might, I might ask, uh, whether you think you have strong calls to action, um, you were talking about engagement. And so whenever they're getting to the next click, um, are they, are, is there something there that's saying like, hey, now that I've got you this far, let me take you a little bit further, like where, whatever that engagement is, whether it's a purchase or whether it's a sign up for a newsletter, um, yeah, what I've done is I've I've had different points where I've offered either a, a PDF type tip sheet or register for this free webinar or, you know, I haven't like, like laid it out fully. So if, if I'm hearing from hearing you correctly, it's more of having more blatant call to actions. I yeah, to okay. I think you're right. And I think the more the, the, the um, I, I, sort of hesitating to say like the word hype, but it, it should be a graduated level of excitement at every next click that, oh, and now this, oh, wow, oh my gosh, you know, where they're not just like they reach a dud kind of, um, oh, oh, that's all it was. And sometimes, um, yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure the whole scope of what you're doing, but it's possible that if if you're looking to get um, sort of a, a community awareness kind of thing going for what you're doing, that um, uh, uh, hey, get a get a uh, get in free to the event we're charging others for. And I'm making this up. Like you may not even have such an event, but people might. Uh, key in on the idea that oh it says you know people are going to be there and i'm the one that's not paying for it and then that almost becomes primary to the consideration of what's even being talked about that's that's the consumer mind of, right. of generating excitement now then it's on you to get you know something that is of interest when they finally show but kind of walking them to that door is more about like yeah let's get them excited and, and ready for it so every next click build that excitement and especially on your website um which hopefully you can do and if you can't there are there are plenty of places to get one made quickly but um you know you, you oh, no, sound, I, yeah, you I sound a, like I you're, have, yeah i have a website and i totally hear that person my mouth dropped when i heard what happened to him from GoDaddy. that's why i'm not at GoDaddy anymore oh. <laughs> so um but no, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate no, it. And I left, I left my um, email in the in Sure. The yeah, I'd be glad to show you where that um, kind of an explanation of that content curation tool. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Deering. Right. So anybody else? I'd love to um, hear about what you guys are up to or, you know, solve the world's problems for you. <laughs> Well, well, Dr. Deering, um, let me use my own example here, and if we don't catch any more questions here in the next five minutes, I can probably promise you a screenshot coming to that email before 7.30 tonight. I have another question? Yes, ma'am. I'm not... Uh... The thing that got me to I didn't I just happened happened upon your 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 ad uh, for tonight, um, and someone had mentioned to me about Score. I'm here in North Carolina and stuff. Um, how specific can like how does how does the the pairing or the matching process work? 
You know, I'll defer to you, uh, Joe to answer. He's a mentor, uh, whereas I'm just a subject matter expert, but he knows much more about the mentoring uh, procedures with SCORE than I can tell okay. you. Right. Yeah. So actually in North Carolina, I don't, uh, where are you in North Carolina? Right outside the Triangle near Chapel Hill. Okay. Well, there will be a local SCORE over there, and that would be the chapter that you would be involved with. And uh, I don't know what their name is. Ours happens to be Piedmont score, but you would go on their website in lieu of not knowing what that is. You could probably go on the national website and request a mentor. Okay. And um, once you request a mentor, you can, while, while you're in the process of doing that, you can request a mentor, say with certain experience, a knowledge, industry, that sort of thing. Um, if you're looking for, say, a mentor with marketing experience, maybe there's one there. Or maybe they have subject matter experts there too that they can uh, hook you up with. But the subject matter experts don't really do mentoring. They support the mentor. So you have to start with a mentor first and one in your own area. So that's what I would suggest. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, if there are no other questions, uh, some of you have not been able to unmute, but you can do the chat. There's a couple chats there. Let's yeah, see. I see one from Aaron. Uh, you're asking paid promotions on LinkedIn. Um, you know, uh, just to be clear, I, I, I wasn't saying LinkedIn specifically. I'm just saying that I do so much work for small businesses that don't they can't consider any budget uh, of any type and they don't have a presence yet. And so it's almost like what's more important that, that we build the thing or that we pay to get eyes on the thing we haven't kind of built yet. That's all I meant when I said um, that I wasn't uh, always the biggest pusher of paid uh, advertising, but um, I know from working with SCORE actually that they've had some outstanding results you know ever since zuckerberg uh faced congress and facebook's platform i mean, i don't know if you were an avid user of it you probably experienced the nature of this shift where um on one end if you were promoting things on it you saw awful returns on that, um, you know, reach and engagement and likes and everything of the sort. Um, whereas once you got into the paid advertising with them, it was strides, like immense strides for probably a pretty reasonable, reasonably priced um, campaign budget. Uh, I think for the results Facebook was getting. Instagram, I have to be honest, is not one of the platforms that I've experienced with paid advertising on, but I could, um, I could dig up some information from some social media friends about that. If you, um, if you want to reach out um, about that specifically, um, not sure how, how do we deliver contact information to us, to them? Maybe if, can they sign up through the newsletter and then create a dialogue with us? Or if you want to throw your email address in the chat window, Aaron, I can look up some specifics about the Instagram paid platform and get back to you with that. Um, yes, no problem. Sure. Yeah, but Facebook, uh, most recently, we saw some really big, um, some very successful campaigns with paid advertising on Facebook for small business. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I have a notary business and I have been using Facebook for the advertising. And like you said, when you put it out there and you're not paying for the advertising, it's not as good as when you start paying and boosting. So I would like to 
know if you feel like the LinkedIn in comparison is similar, better, as far as the reach and the um, um, return on investment that you yeah. receive uh, compared to Facebook. And I know you, I, I won't say Instagram because you said that you haven't used it very much and neither have I, I'm getting ready to move into that platform. Yeah. And also Twitter, maybe Twitter might be a better well, I, you know, I was going to bring that up to you, actually, that the nature of what you're doing, um, you said a notary business, yes? Yes, I have a notary public uh, business, a mobile notary, uh, mm -hmm. and I partner with some home health care agencies for that, so that helps to improve the business in that area, mm -hmm. and I also have a grant writing business. Yeah, that, those are wonderfully uh, academic and um, kind of service business oriented things as opposed to maybe what I would consider now don't get me wrong Instagram is always going to have a place I think for everyone because the platform is just sort of uh, you know ubiquitously popular but um, specific to the uh, the industries that you're um, catering to I would definitely say Twitter would be great, especially because I imagine there's a lot of issues with regulations or changes uh, in the law, but then also people who are already involved with regulations and current events and maybe maybe political uh, climates. Uh, so anyone involved in the news-oriented um, industries are going to be users of Twitter, it's a predominantly news oriented platform. And then simply because you have your um, customers uh, so well segmented and targeted, I would imagine LinkedIn would be a very valuable uh, platform for you to explore on how to get directly to those types. Facebook is wonderful for reaching a lot of people but sometimes that's not as good as reaching the specific kind of person you're after. And perhaps in your case, you're lucky enough to have a very clear identification of the types or type of, of person you're after versus, you know, an entire uh, company maybe doesn't want to whittle it down quite as much as you're able to. So uh, a platform that sort of reaches a larger mass like Facebook whether paid or unpaid, you know, might, might work better or worse. I think in your case, Twitter and LinkedIn would be excellent choices for you to explore. Thank you. Thank yes. you very much. I will definitely do that. And I like where you pin, you pointed out the targeting, the um, being more specific on targeting LinkedIn may be better for that. Yeah. Especially with law offices. Um, Real estate, Mortgage. they need notaries, oh, right? Things, yes. It, mm -hmm. Every property, whether it's property or housing, has to have a notary behind it. Yeah. That yeah, we, we uh, catered to the real estate with the, the last client I was using as like an example. And we, I was surprised. I thought maybe Facebook was going to wind up being the more uh, responsive platform for the real estate segment we were going after, but I found the opposite to be true. I found that LinkedIn, either the engine of the platform itself was delivering more accurate data or it was getting, whatever the case, the response was good and accurate and targeted on exactly what we were after. And to share that with you, it was specifically the real estate industry. So I hope in whatever geography you're in, you you have um, that number of kind of users that we wound up finding for ourselves. Okay, great. I'm actually in the Piedmont score area. I'm in Anderson, South Carolina. Well, the client I was working with is Atlanta. So um, I haven't really investigated the real estate uh, segment for the Piedmont area, but I hope that it's yeah, still that it turns out to be successful for you. Thank you. Hey, Nicole? Yes, that's Chris. Uh, yes, 
uh, excellent job. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and just a comment, I just wanted to thank you. You, you demystified the LinkedIn for me. I'm always a little leery of what to post and, and, and just what to do about it. So I've tended to shy away from it. So I, I truly appreciate you taking time and helping us just have a better understanding of it. It definitely uh, will go a long way for, for myself and, uh, and our business. So oh, thank you. That's great to hear. Thank you very much. Well. Okay, well, that looks like about it. So thank you very much for, for attending. If you'd, uh, just to remind you, um, you might wanna double check the Piedmont Score website. And if you'd like to sign up for a mentor, you can do that there. And if you have any special requests, as I say, for uh, industry experience, uh, uh, market knowledge, whatever it happens to be, you can request that and we have a, a director who can uh, hopefully set you up that way. Uh, also, the library there is just outstanding and uh, there's a lot of information there that you can learn on your own because, you know, we all are small business people and uh, we have to know a little bit about everything and we have to be educating ourselves all the time. And uh, reading is one way to do that. And that website has all kinds of interesting articles uh, about just about any business subject you might be interested in. So, so anyway, thanks again. And uh, if there are no more questions. We'll just uh, end it right here. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Enjoy your evening. Good job, Nicole. <laughs>